May the 28th, 2024. Guys, you're looking at a paused image of our sun. Notice your time stamp, May 27th, 706 Universal Time. This was the X 2.9. Now, they're saying it was stronger than that, but because it was not pointed directly at the satellites that are between the sun and the earth, then it got kind of the side energy. So as it turns, that flare would have been stronger. What uh, The reason I have it paused here is notice this flame and this plasma cloud that is shooting out from this thing. It's actually cut off right there. I, I'm not doing that. That's how far that it is uh, exploding out. This thing is also in the southern hemisphere of the sun, just like it was when it came around before. Now, we'll play this forward, but uh, again, increased chance of X flares, and we're dealing with the southern hemisphere of the sun. The Earth is not at the equator of the sun it's south of there because of the way the ecliptic is everything's not on a perfect plane and the earth is in that southern hemisphere that's why we have those strong geomagnetic storms that it looks like it may be getting ready to happen again we need to pay attention to it because i wasn't the only one that noticed that uh, very powerful flame it looked like that came off of that sunspot guys the one of the they call him an amateur astronomer, but he's been doing it about 40 years, and he put up an image that's over on space weather. We're going to check that out. We'll look at the latest from Solar Ham also. But it's continuing to crackle with these smaller flares. See that? And they're just registering. They're not registering anywhere near an X flare, but again, the satellites that pick up that energy are facing or between the Earth and the Sun. So as this thing comes around... That's going to change. Let's take a look at one other image while we're on this SDO satellite. Different camera, same satellite, the SDO. This is what we're going to be watching right here. We can definitely see the size. does not look like it's decreased that much, but we cannot take our eyes off of this uh, sunspot, this group in the northern hemisphere of the sun. Even though it is in the northern hemisphere and we're not, it would still be very Earth-facing. Now, again, you can see here the different colorations, different magnetic uh, groups. That's what creates the spark that causes these strong flares. Right there, let's take a closer look. Now, it's hard to tell, but we do know that it's very capable of having the energy needed because it just did it yesterday on the 27th early. We saw the X flare. Now, I'll let it play through, guys, but again, this is the area we're going to have to pay it very close attention to, and this one, too. We don't need a double, a double whammy. I've seen it happen many times. Again, closer look, but we were looking at just about the last frame, and there it comes around. So anything happening now would not be directly Earth-facing except for the photon, not proton. The photon burst put a, a radio blackout. I think it was over parts of Asia when that flare uh, actually exploded. We'll be ke uh, keeping a very close eye on this. Let's look at uh, a couple of other things uh, that's happening on the sun now that can be very dangerous also. But staying on the SDO satellite, this is combining three different images to give you this. Notice the blue, red, and green timestamps at the bottom. All these are current. But this is a still image. Here is, notice how bright it is where that sunspot's coming around. You see the other areas. But what could be very dangerous are the filaments. And this is an unusual amount to be on the sun all at one time. You've got this one, and you can see how the edges are starting to raise. You've got this one. And energy can transfer from one tip of one of these that are thousands of kilometers long. You know, the Earth, it would take, I think, 115 or 119, maybe, to scale if you put them across the face of the sun there. Quite large, and these filaments are very large also. What can happen, though, is that energy travels, say, from this sunspot, maybe down to another one or up in this area from here. They can, uh, as the explosion happens, one end of these filaments will explode then it will throw out into space like a whip as the other end of it explodes. And those can be very dangerous. We've seen them in this area when they release. For some reason, it always seems to happen in the northern Pacific, 
around the Aleutian Islands, somewhere in Alaska at that point, in the northern hemisphere of the planet, because our northern hemisphere matches that the sun's southern hemisphere, and we've seen it before, actually called it when we see these things uh, released. But I think the last one was 5 o'clock in the morning in Alaska, and the uh, people felt it shook them up out of bed, and that's, they had called it on the models down to the minute. It was very accurate. Anyway, the number of filaments can be, any of these can explode at any time. This one is beginning to look dangerous, but the other ones can catch you off guard. The darker blue areas that you see here and right in this area is where the magnetic canopy over the sun, just like clouds here on Earth, you can see it all over. All right? You'll have energy leaving and then come back to the surface through these lines, kind of like our magnetic lines of force. But when you see the blue areas, it's like a clear sky. And uh, energy comes straight off the surface. There's nothing to capture it. And if you see it from these satellites, it's headed to, uh, towards Earth. And that increases your solar wind speed. And those, these are not very large uh, compared to some that we've seen. And the solar speed is now, or solar wind speed, is just uh, not far above normal, maybe 100 kilometers per second, something like that. But uh, the, uh, those dark brown areas you're looking at can be activated. And look at how close this one is to the sunspot in question. Let's take a look over at spaceweather.com. Every uh, image that you've seen or video comes from links on our website at bpearthwatch.com. They've been there for a dozen years. But in this, it's titled Return of the Historic Sunspot. It's back almost sunspot AR3664. That's what it was called when it went around. They've got that changed just a little now. But it says uh, this is a source of the historic May 10th superstorm. It spent the past two weeks transiting the far side of the sun. Yesterday it announced its return with an X2.8 class solar flare. Amateur astronomer Michael Kerr was watching the sun with the explo when this explosion occurred and he captured this piece of flying debris. Now, we saw it going off from the side. Depending on what uh, camera and everything else, this would actually, it's not coming from the top. It's coming out that left side the way that you saw it as far as our spec, uh, perspective from Earth. But that's a tremendous amount of energy compared to the amount of curvature that you see on this large ball. And Michael said in his 40 years of a, watching the sun, he'd never seen any explosion like this. The explosion caused a deep shortwave radio blackout over East Asia and hurled a bright CME into space. Again, not Earth-facing. A NASA model of the CME confirms that it will miss Mercury, Venus, and Earth. None of the inner planets will be affected by this powerful event. That You still got Jupiter, Mars, that group out there. I haven't looked at it in detail. That's a powerful burst, and that area is turning towards us. Now, this is very interesting. It says, how do we know the flare came from AR-3664? Well, guys, you can count it. You know, you're about 27, 28 days from the, the sunspot appearing till it gets all the way back to that same point. But what they're doing is using helioseismology. And it says, uh, the giant sunspot is affecting the way the sun vibrates, and its seismic echoes are visible in maps of the sun's far side. And what you're seeing right there, we're just getting the very edge of it, guys, in the video you just saw. This is AR3664. There's another one behind it. But that's what we're seeing. And again, the, the seismic echoes can tell that. And it's showing right there also. The map shows AR3664 is just behind the southeastern limb of the sun. A good match for the location of yesterday's X-flare. Clearly, AR3664 is still active as it turns to the to face the Earth again later this week. Again, we're going to have about 14 days of uh, it being close enough to being Earth-facing to affect us in one way or the other if we get any more activity from it. It's interesting that on the timing of these, I've seen it have to do with how close Mercury or Venus is to the sun before. It's like a magnetic 
opposite polarity deal going on and they affect it. I've seen them hurl straight at earth as uh, things line up, but uh, we don't know yet. We may take a look at that before the video is over. Just take a look at where the planets are. But again, 3664 has a new name. Now, another link on our website, been there forever, Solar Ham, right next to Space Weather. But this is also amateur radio station VE3E9 in Canada, Ham Radio. This is a visible disc today. Now, 3664 is 3697. These numbers increase as they go around. 3691, though, guys, again, it has gone from being a double magnetic polarities to triple and that's when they become dangerous but again 3697 will be uh in the news for the next few days more than likely now this is the flare the red line is your x indicator and this was a 2.9 it's been fairly inactive going into some of your c flares but again those that you see crackling from that edge are not directly facing the satellites you're going to more than likely see this line increased. Notice, though, that uh, it was going from a 25% chance of X flares to a 30%. Now, your C flares just are the smaller ones. Your M flares, there's 60% chance of that happening here. Proton events, 10%. Notice the X 2.9 has come from 3697. That's the new number of the sunspot that's returned. Now, 3691 is the one that's in the northern hemisphere that I'm talking about. has triple magnetic uh, configurations. Notice that uh, it says beta, gamma, and delta, the BGD right there in 3691. That's why they've got such a high uh, watch for M flares right now. It's, again, 60% chance. The other sunspots, either beta or alpha, not a combination now, they don't have a combination here on 3697. We, as it comes around and becomes more visible, then we can use the colorized magnetogram like we saw and tell the magnetics in it. We know it's very strong because of that 2.9. Now, it, again, the energy is small. We're getting right here and coming out of C, starting to touch an M flares, but it is at a higher level than before this flare appeared. So everything is elevated. We're going to keep an eye on that. Staying on solar ham, let's take a look at this solar cycle, solar cycle 25 progression. It's 10 days old, very good chart. Now, this is the current sunspot numbers, the top. SSN is sunspot numbers. Notice the sunspot bottomed out 24 did in 2020 right there. Then it's risen ever since. It's not quite at the peak. It's going to peak before 2026, but just about probably this time of the year, next year in 2025. But it's well above the average and last year's numbers, 1,306, well, excuse me, 136.5 sunspots. That's the actual number predicted was 101.4. Now, notice that it is above the average number of sunspots, that's because things are heating up. At the bottom, this is uh, the solar flux progression. And it's actually, that's the energy you're dealing with. And uh, it's actually higher than the number of sunspots. Check this out. The ones producing that energy. See the purple line right there? And so much higher than predicted. We didn't know uh, exactly what would happen because each solar cycle... For the last several, which last about 11.8 years, has been decreasing in its peak. Suddenly, it looks like that decline in solar cycles is changing back to an increase. If it, This could be a one fluke year, but I don't think so. Things are getting too warm. Things are indicating that uh, things will continue to warm up. How does it do that? By the energy coming from our sun. Guys, there's another very interesting chart that you can look at that talks about this increase in these solar cycles. And this goes back five years to 2019, and that's right when we saw the solar cycle 25 bottom out into two, and, uh, 2020. 
Now, it's interesting uh, that you've got, here's your solar flux indexes, and this is the month that starts with uh, April 2024. That's as updated as this is. That's fine, though. You've got the sunspot numbers, SSI, or SSN, the, and then you've got smooth SSN, and this is what they look at right here in this N column. When it's all said and done, this is the one that's important for activity on the sun. So in September, this is a, goes back to, let's see, this would be October 2023. Now, notice there's nothing in the, uh, the smooth sunspot numbers, say that fast, in the last six months. That's because they have not been rounded down and looked at. That data is not available yet, but we can tell. But I will look at the sunspot numbers. You can see they're increasing and from the winter. Now, last year, uh, during the heat wave, look at uh, April, they were, started, they were 96. But look at May, June, and July, you were up 137, 163, 159 in the numbers. Remember how hot it was? Remember that. Now, once they smooth this out, as they called it, they, this is the important chart. And let's go all the way to the bottom, and uh, that will take us to 29. Again, the middle of the year, June, this will be going back almost five years exactly. We're almost in June now. And look at these numbers on the right. And I'll scroll back up just to give you a quick idea of what we're dealing with now. Uh, 124 was the last one that's been smoothed off uh, since uh, September. One look at the decrease over the years. Now let's, again, do look back at the burning heat of last year may june july august and there 124 and all that's remained see that 125 123 in the uh, smooth sunspot numbers but then you go back 98 oh this is the last column that's what matters and uh, look at back, going back to 3.7 in june of 2019 that's why it's getting hotter that's why we're getting uh a change in the sunspots. It was predicted to go into so grand solar minimum. We were going into uh, solar minimum because each cycle over the 11.8 year span decreased, and they expected that to continue. But if you read the Bible and you realize where we're at in end times, the heat will be increasing. The fourth angel. And by the way, that angel is. His M.O. is he's the angel of repentance. And what does it say? Man, do not repent when they're scorched with heat. But that's his job to try to get that done. But many will not do it. But again, we're dealing with smooth sunspot numbers this year, or going into the end of last year at 124. You can see how high the numbers now in just the, the unsmooth or the un- the data that really matters as far as the energy coming from the sun going down to 3.7 in June. That's quite an increase, and that's what the difference is in going from solar minimum to solar maximum inside a cycle. And we're getting very close again to next year peaking. And so what do we got to look forward to? Another year of intensification, according to these numbers, right? That means... The storms will increase, but my main concern, we know we're going to have hurricanes and tornadoes, but their numbers will increase. But, guys, the heat is deadly. I've been looking around the world, and in India and Asia, different places, the heat is unbelievable in, in Mexico, in Victoria City, 117 degrees. That's the temperature, and um, you're having – an tremendous effect on people a lot of deaths are not being reported in a lot of nations but that heat wave is increasing and that's what we're dealing with but guys uh, we're watching it you watch it i'm going to put some information together when i can find it on the numbers at that uh, occurred during the peak of the last solar cycle solar cycle 24 because things are heating up it goes along with the 13,000 year cycle that we've been talking about again we're watching it you watch it it's a heads up be safe